Hey guys, welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in the previous tutorial, I taught you exactly how password cracking works and what are different ways as to how we can go ahead and crack them. And uh, so in this tutorial, we're talking about the password cracking strategy and the softwares that we could use. Many newbies or noobs, uh, when they start cracking passwords, they simply choose a tool and a word list and turn them loose. They're often disappointed with the results. Expert password crackers have a strategy. They don't expect to be able to crack every password, but with a well-developed strategy, not with a software. They can crack most passwords in a very short and limited amount of time. The key to develop a successful strategy of password cracking is to use multiple iterations. Going after the easiest passwords with the first iteration to the most difficult passwords using different techniques for each iteration. So the few password cracking softwares that are famous are John the Ripper, which we have already over here. And uh, where is it? Okay, so we have here as I told you, we have John the Ripper over here. And it's a very good password cracking tool. John the Ripper is probably the world's best known password cracking tool. It is strictly command line and strictly for Linux. It lacks a graphic user interface which makes a bit more challenging to use but it is also why it is such a fast password cracker. One of the beauty of this tool is its built-in default password cracking strategy. First, it attempts a dictionary attack and if that fails, it then attempts to use combined dictionary words. Then it tries a hybrid attack of dictionary words with special characters and numbers and only if all those fail with it uh, resort, will it resort to a brute force. So it knows exactly what it's doing and in my previous tutorial, um, I informed in one of my previous tutorial I informed you uh, in the basics part that how exactly it works I probably may have showed you a uh, easiest way to use a John the Ripper to go ahead and crack the SAM database of the windows and in today's tutorials I'll be teaching you how to go ahead and crack the windows as well as the Linux password so that is one part after that we have OPH crack and as you can see we have the OPH crack over here as well OPH Crack is a free rainbow table based password cracking tool for Windows. It is all among the most popular Windows uh, password cracking tools. And uh, there is also one more that is known as Kane and Abel, which is also very popular and but it cannot be used for Linux. Um, but OPH Crack can be used for Linux and Mac systems as well. And it cracks the LM and NTLM Windows hashes and for cracking Windows XP, Vista and Windows 7, you can download free rainbow tables, you can download the OPH crack on SourceForge as well if you're using any other um, operating system and you can get some free and premium rainbow tables for OPH crack over there. After that we have Loft or Crack L0PHT is an alternative to uh, OPH crack and attempts to crack the Windows passwords from hashes in the SAM file or from the Active Directory. It also uses the dictionary and brute force attack for generating and guessing passwords. And Loft Crack was acquired by Symantec and they promptly discontinued it in the 2006. Later, Loft Crack developers reacquired this excellent password cracking tool. It was re-released in the 2009 and uh, you can download it from their website or uh, in the source forge. After that, we have Kane and Abel. Kane and Abel just might be the best password cracking to, uh, tool on this whole planet which is written strictly for Windows, it can crack numerous hash types such as including the NTLM, NTLM version 2, MD5, Wireless, Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, SHA1, SS2, Cisco, VOIP and n number of other things. Kane and Abel were mostly um, famous for their dictionary attacks, rainbow attacks and brute force. One of its best features is the ability to select the password length and character set when attempting a brute force attack. And besides being an excellent password cracking tool, it is also a great ARP poisoning and MITM that's man in the middle or monkey in the middle attack tool as well. After that we have THC Hydra, I believe that we have Hydra as well over here, let me just check. We should probably have that. We have the rainbow cracker, true crack. I thought we would be having, we have burp suit. Okay, we have the Hydra as I told you previously. I, okay, Kane and Abel uh, won't be here, I believe. We have OVASP, Zap as well, which is quite good exactly. Okay, no. So we don't have the Kane and Abel. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And uh, the THC Hydra is probably the uh, most widely used online hacking tool. It is mostly used for uh, cracking online passwords. It is capable of cracking web form authentication 
and when used in conjunction with other tools such as tamper data it can be a powerful and effective tool for carrying nearly every type of online password authentication mechanism and then we have brutus brutus is an online password cracking tool again that may be considered the fastest online password cracker it is free and available both on windows and linux and it supports password cracking in http that is a basic authentication and html form or cgi pop3 ftp smb telnet and many other types such as let's say imap nntp netbus etc and brutus has not been updated in quite a while but it can still be useful and since it is an open source you can update it yourself brutus can be downloaded from its own website then for uh, wireless hacking we have aircrack ng in my opinion aircrack ng is undoubtedly the best all around wi-fi hacking software available till date it is capable of cracking both wep wpa it is also capable of doing uh, a lot of other things than just cracking uh, Wi-Fi passwords. It can go and create a soft uh, infrastructure or creating an evil twin or rogue access point. Uh, it can also go ahead and conduct a DOS attack against a Wi-Fi even without accessing it. But it is only available for Linux and requires a bit of learning curve to master it. But you will be richly rewarded for the time spent learning it because in addition to be most effective, uh, you will need to use the Aircrack NG compatible wireless card as well. So check the extensive list before buying your card. You can find more info over there in their its own website of aircrackng.com. And Aircrack NG is built into uh, Backtrack and Kali, and uh, so you won't need to go ahead and download it from any place else. Aircrack NG. Yep, uh, we have the latest build, I believe. Yep, perfect. And so finally, we have the botnet. Uh, password cracking is simply a function of brute force computing power. What one machine can do in an hour, two machines can do that in half an hour, and like 10 machines can probably do it in 5 minutes. This same principle allows uh, to use a network machine. Imagine what could you do if you could access a 1 million machines at a time. And yes, you can. So what is is exactly like, let's say for example, I am a hacker, I'll go ahead and control a company's single administrator computer. And through that administrator, I'll go ahead and get access to all the computers. So my botnet would be all these computers uh, with the main, uh, uh, their administrator PC in the middle, in between. So instead of me going ahead, if I want to, let's say, uh, there are, let's say, let me just open my notepad. It will be much easier to go ahead and explain it. Perfect. Let's say there is a point A and then we have a point B. A is uh, a one company and B is two company. A is my target company. Let's say for example, and B is not my target. I have nothing to do with B. But I wanted to crack the passwords of online uh, from of the company A. But uh, I don't have the sufficient hacking power. I cannot go down. Uh, I tried every method, but only brute force was available in the final. Uh, I, I did not have any other option. Uh, but by doing for doing brute force, my computer is just like let's say for example, it's an i5 uh, core i5 or core i7 with 8 gigs of RAM and stuff. Uh, but that won't be sufficient for me to go ahead and crack a very huge company's uh, password because I have tried each and every other thing, but they were not successful so i think that probably uh, the, this uh, brute force just by one machine won't be available so what i would do is that i would go ahead and hack another company b which i have hacked sometime previously in my life and um, maybe i have already a backdoor in that company's uh, computer and that company let's say for example that company has a total of 200 computers and uh, i don't know exactly uh, what speed they have but they have 200 computers so it doesn't matter actually so what i would do instead of me and i'll just go ahead and write mr smart and this would be me so instead of me directly going ahead and attacking this a target which will take me like months or maybe a year uh, like approximately three to four months to crack that instead of me doing that i will go ahead and use these 200 computers I'll hack the main administrator and then I'll go ahead and get access to these 200 computers in that organization and I'll go ahead and set them up to go ahead and crack this company's uh, website. And just imagine what you could do and 200 is just a normal uh, minimum point because normally a company has like around 500 to 600 computers in min minimum. Uh, so just think what you, can you do if you have 1000 or this is just I'm talking about a, comp a single company. If I could do that to multiple com companies or multiple people who access cyber cafes or through their homes, just imagine 
what kind of passwords would I be able to crack using brute force. So some of the passwords or botnets available around the globe are more than a million machines strong and are available for rent to crack passwords as well. If you have a password that might take one year to crack with a single CPU, a million machine botnet can cut the time approximately to one millionth of the time or to be precise 30 seconds. So one year cut short to 30 seconds. Uh, I don't think that anything can be better than that. And finally, we have the GPU and ASIC. Uh, GPU or graphical processing units are much more powerful and faster than CPU for rendering graphics on your computer and for password cracking. I have a few tools built in into Kali that are specifically designed for using GPU to crack passwords, namely CUDA Hashcat or OCL Hashcat and Pirate. So just look on for my incoming tutorials in the uh, by the end of these tutorials, and you will probably be see one of my tutorials which would actually go ahead and crack these passwords and I'll be using my GPU uh, for my high-end video card to accelerate our password cracking and ASIC in our recent years some devices have been developed uh, specifically for hardware cracking these application specific devices can crack passwords faster than over 100 P CPUs working symmetrically uh, so some of the uh, examples are as follows such as Butte Fury boards by Black Arrow team or Butterfly Labs processor and inside the Butterfly Labs we have Monarch. So Black Arrow software and Butterfly Labs among the others are now selling these devices for prices up to 1500 per piece. And yes, so that would be it for this tutorial that concludes uh, my beginning lesson on the basics of general password cracking. Stay tuned for more lessons as I go in deep with specific examples of using some of the tools and methods that I have just covered above. So that would be it for this tutorial and um, yep, in the next tutorial I'll be continuing with the same thing but it would be a bit more advanced and I'll be teaching you exactly um, how this works exactly and what all we could do to go ahead and hack these passwords.